backpack ministry in Arizona, uh, which took place from July 31st to August 3rd, uh, in lieu of the regular trip that we do uh, almost every year. Uh, the picture I'm starting off with, though, is not from this year. Uh, it's a picture I've had for uh, over 20 years. Actually, it says uh, 1996 on the back of this. I was much, much younger then, and I, yeah, <laughs> but uh, a little bit of background. Uh, there are two main sites in Arizona that we partnered with throughout the years. Uh, White River, which is on the Apache Reservation, and Many Farms, which is on the Navajo Reservation. Um, our, our church has been going to Many Farms on and off for, for 30 years or more. Uh, White River, uh, we went for a few years back in the early 2000s, and it's usually a one-week trip. Um, with uh, bring a dozen people or more, uh, and we usually do uh, vacation Bible school and other ministries working directly with the kids. Um, but last year we were unable to go because of the pandemic. Um, the Navajo Reservation was uh, basically in total lockdown, uh, the borders were closed, um, and this year we were hoping to get back to normal, uh, but God had different plans for us as uh, we weren't able to access the, the church to use the site. So instead, uh, we had the opportunity to put together some backpacks to donate to the Native American children. Um, the beginning of August was right when they were just starting to go back to school in person uh, after being off for over a year. Uh, about a week before the trip, uh, we put together uh, uh, 192 backpacks and uh, with school supplies, a children's Bible, a gospel track, and a personal note of encouragement. Youth Fellowship and the WMU helped out with that. Um, we coordinated together with the, uh, the public ministry backpacks. Um, and uh, originally, we were going to have three uh, brothers uh, go together to uh, drive out the backpacks and deliver them to Arizona. Uh, but one of them had to drop out at the last minute uh, due to illness. Uh, so the team was just Eugene Kim and me. Uh, I was really grateful for the opportunity to go back. Uh, it's been uh, 20 years since I've been to many farms. And I've never gotten a chance to go to White River. Uh, so the first day uh, was, a, was a travel day. Uh, so we uh, originally we were actually planning to go to Phoenix, uh, but we decided to, to, to continue to a town called Sholo, which is just outside the Fort uh, Apache Reservation. Uh, and the reason for that was because the pastor of the White River Church had invited us uh, to join them for Sunday service the next day. So uh, the second day, uh, we made a short trip down into White River. Uh, it's uh, in a really beautiful valley surrounded by forest, and it's actually surprisingly green for Arizona. Um, so we joined the worship service there at the White Mountain Apache Baptist Church. And in all the years that I've gone to many farms uh, way back, uh, we would actually never gotten to join the church for worship, because uh, we usually arrived on Sunday afternoon, uh, and we left early on, on Saturday morning the next week. Um, so it was a great opportunity to, to, to uh, participate and, and join with the Native Americans. Uh, Pastor John Hoyt is the guy in the uh, middle of the picture, standing next to Eugene. Uh, he gave the sermon. Uh, his wife, Paula, uh, led the singing, and one of their daughters did the PowerPoint. So it really was a family affair putting together the worship. Uh, we actually spent a lot of the time uh, during the worship service as a congregation praying for other uh, Native American churches, as uh, Pastor Hoyt is uh, the director of the Four Corners Association of Southern Baptists, uh, and uh, it's a, just a network of uh, Native American churches, about a dozen of them in the Four Corners area. Um, and after the service, we dropped off about 90 of the backpacks, and the reason it wasn't exactly half was that we had put them all into these big plastic bags to, to, to transport them out there, and we just happened to have a bottom number of bags. Um, they were really appreciative of the gift, um, but they thought the place that it would most be needed was actually not on their reservation, but on a board, at a boarding school up near Winslow. Um, and that's where they were planning to deliver the backpacks to. Um, after we dropped off the backpacks, we had lunch with Pastor Boyd, and also one of the elders of the church, you can see in the picture, his name is David. And we got to hear more uh, in detail about the different ministries that are happening in all of the different churches in Arizona. Uh, and one of the most encouraging things uh, to me was hearing that some of these churches actually have Native American pastors uh, that are uh, new and with the serving God with a lot of energy.
And after lunch, uh, we headed up to the Navajo Reservation. Uh, we went to Chinui, which is the bigger town that's a little uh, just south of many farms. Uh, I also circled uh, Winslow on the map, just to see, so you can see what, that's where the backpacks uh, were going. Uh, we got to Chinui uh, just in time for dinner, so we met up with an old friend. Uh, his name is Ernest Tabara, and his son Christian. Uh, Ernest is the son of our longtime contact in uh, many farms. Uh, her name is Jackie Ibarra. I think you've probably heard that name before. Um, he's also one of my former VBS students uh, from when I first went back in the 1990s. I think he was in uh, fifth grade the first time I was there. And now you can see he's grown up into a, into a, into a good man and an awesome father. And he's still a believer. Um, so the next day we uh, had a short visit to Canyon du Chais, which is the, uh, the national monument that's there uh, for a morning devotional. We got to take in the wonder of God's creation. And then we made the, the short drive up to Many Farms to drop off the rest of the backpacks. Uh, we dropped them off at the elementary school. So, um, Jackie is the lady that you can see on the far left. And the one in the middle is the principal of the school. She's actually a brand new, and her name is Sherry Sosi. Uh, we were really upfront with them. We told them we were coming from a church, and you know we put Bibles inside the backpacks. Uh, but they were still really grateful to accept them for their students. It was actually the first day they were their students were going back to in-person learning, and uh, a lot of their students had chosen uh, to continue with remote learning. So. Uh, the principal said they had supplies for the students that were at the school, but they were wanting to deliver our backpacks to the ones who were staying at, you know, staying at home and learning from home. So uh, after that, we went up to the church at Mini Farms. Uh, we took a quick tour around. Um, we weren't able to get inside because we weren't able to get in touch with the, the people who had the key, uh, but we were able to just look, look around and see how things were going on the, around the outside. Uh, right now, they do not have a pastor. Um, and we haven't had a uh, church service since the pandemic started. Um, but we were told that there's been a group of uh, four women who do meet regularly for Bible study. Uh, and also there's uh, been some weather damage to the, to the roof, uh, especially on the parsonage side. After that, we uh, spent a little bit more time catching up with Ernest at his home. Uh, he lives right next to the church. Uh, his son was actually back in school, but his younger daughter was still at home. She's uh, too young to go to school. And uh, we spent some more time just catching up with him and seeing how life has been for the past few years and how the pandemic's been uh, on the reservation. Uh, and after that, we drove out to the lake, uh, which is just right next uh, to the church in many farms. Uh, and that's where we built the rock pile uh, with the altar. Uh, when we sent the teams there uh, you know, 20 years ago. Uh, the altar's not as big or as nice as it used to be, uh, but it's still there. And after that, uh, we went back down to Chinley and had lunch with Jackie. Uh, got to catch up with her, see how things are going and how her ministry is going and how uh, she's been doing. Uh, just, uh, meeting up with an old friend, she remembering us from uh, so many years uh, there. And uh, that was pretty much it for our trip. Um, after that, we started heading home. Uh, we drove about half the way on, on Monday and then the rest of the way on Tuesday. Um, I put the map up of our whole trip. Just praise God that God brought us there and back safely. Uh, even though we weren't able to meet with the, 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 the kids this time, we were able to deliver the backpacks uh, and serve them that way. Um, so quickly before I finish, uh, here are some of the prayer needs. Uh, first, pray for the 192 children who received the backpacks. Uh, you know, we're doing Operation Christmas Child, and one of the things they always tell us is that with the shoeboxes is that, you know, it's not just a box of presents. It's, each box is a child that we're hoping to reach with the gospel. And that's the same with the backpacks. So uh, even though we weren't able to meet the children uh, directly, we, each of those backpacks is a child. And we just pray that the gospel goes to them, that they read the track that we put in there, that they read the Bible, that um, if they have questions, they can find a Christian or a church nearby that they can they go, go to. Uh, also for the, uh, for the White River Church, uh, they're, they're, been, they're actually kind of like us. They've been able to be, meet back in person for a while now, uh, but their attendance is down because of the pandemic. Uh, some people are being afraid to come back and meet in person. Uh, 
We have also been having some issues with vandalism. Uh, there have been some broken windows and people uh, said broken in and stolen things. Uh, so pray for security for that. And then pray for Pastor Tom, uh, John Coy because he ministers not only to his own flock, but also for uh, all the other churches in the Four Corners Association. Uh, his church is really a mission oriented. They, they spend a lot of time and actually thinking about the other churches in the area and, and praying for them as well. So uh, pray for Pastor Coy. For many forms of chimney, uh, the, the Navajo Reservation was actually one of the worst hot spots in the country for COVID. And it's actually still pretty bad there. Uh, they're having a new surge. Uh, the day we arrived in Chinle, actually, uh, two members of uh, Jackie's church, the one that she'd been attending in Chinle, called the Potter's House, uh, they passed away within an hour of each other from COVID. Uh, we were actually originally hoping to meet with the pastor, uh, but of course that day he was busy with uh, helping the family out and making grand funeral arrangements. The reservation is still using a tier system for reopening like we were doing last summer. And they're currently in the orange tier, which is considered moderate high. And everything on the reservation closes at like 5 o'clock. Uh, not even the gas stations or convenience stores are open at night. So basically after dark, uh, everyone's on their own. And Jackie herself has been uh, struggling with the effects of long haulers COVID uh, since she got infected last December. She has to drive many hours actually outside the reservation to go to, to doctor's appointments. Uh, yes, she's still, you know, whatever time and energy she has left, she devotes that to trying to help those on the reservation in need to bring the gospel to them. Uh, for the church, for the Big Farms Baptist Church, uh, they need a pastor. And I think our ultimate goal in each of these places that you've been hearing, uh, that we've been going to, uh, is that we would establish a, a self-sustaining church in the long term. And uh, for that, they would need a pastor who's committed uh, to be there for the long term. So, I think ideally for many farms, it would be a, a Native American pastor. Uh, but just pray for God to send the right person to them. Uh, and finally, pray for future opportunities for our church, uh, for us to minister there. Hopefully, we can work out how to get access to the church, uh, which we would need if we want to do the kind of BBS trips that we've done in the past. Um, and I just I want to end with a, a, another picture of that um, I think it's kind of symbolic of the current state of affairs. Um, the Navajo Nation is struggling, and the Many Farms Church is struggling, but the foundation is still there. Uh, God hasn't abandoned these people. He's still at work in Many Farms. Um, so let's pray for all pray for us, for Him to guide us. Um, and, and guard our church and how we consider how to continue to serve Native Americans.